<laughs> I want to thank you, Mark, for that introduction. I want to thank you, Dr. Feingold, for kicking this off. But I got to tell you something. I remember the Republican Jewish Coalition. The first time I went to a meeting, I think uh, Mark and Leah remember that. It was back over there at the South County Civic Center. And there are only about 15 or 20 people that were there. Look at where you have come today. You should give yourselves a round of applause. You know, once upon a time, people would say Republican, Jewish, and black conservatives were oxymorons and we didn't exist. Well, I'm here to tell you that we exist and we're not going away. You know, last week when you sat there and uh, you had your bottle of Maalox next to you, you listened, <laughs> you listened to the president's 38-minute speech. I, I took every minute. <laughs> but what you have to understand, well, there are so many lies and so many deceitful sentences and statements that were made. When you have a president that stood up there and talked about how he ended the war in Iraq. But Mr. President, I have to tell you something very simple, coming from a military man. There are only two ways that you end a war. You either win it or you lose it. You don't just pack up and say we're going home. Last year, when we had the opportunity to go and sit down with Prime Minister Netanyahu, he said one simple thing. He said, do not zero out your troop presence in Iraq. He said, if you zero out your true presence in Iraq, you will create a vacuum. And that's exactly what has happened. We have a president that understands campaign promises, but he does not understand national security. He does not understand foreign policy. So when General Austin asked for 10 to 15,000 troops to be there as a residual force, and he said, no, you get 5,000. He said, okay, I can take that, Commander in Chief. Then the Commander in Chief came back and said, you get zero. So now you see what is happening in Syria, where we have the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, they're the supporting Bashar al-Assad, we have Russia, we have China, we have Hezbollah, all because we have a president that's more concerned about his own career and campaign promises instead of listening to the Prime Minister of Israel, our greatest ally, we should be supporting all parties. has not studied history, and most importantly recent history, to go back and look at Jimmy Carter. If you had to go back and look at the faux pas that Jimmy Carter made when we did not support the Shah of Iran, and what did we get? We got the Ayatollahs, we got radical Islamism. Yeah. So here we had Hosni Mubarak, maybe not the best of guys, but he was our guy. Yeah, exactly. And we threw him under the bus, and now who is in control of Egypt? The Muslim Brotherhood. So all of a sudden now Israel has another front that it has to be concerned about. They have Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. They have Hamas in Gaza. And now you have the Muslim Brotherhood, you have radical Islamism and terrorism coming out of the Sinai. So now they have to try to hurry up and build a fence. Once again, we have a president that has no vision as far as international security, national security, and foreign policy. We have a president that in the speech, he sat up there and tried to ridicule Mitt Romney saying that Mitt Romney has a Cold War era when he starts to talk about Russia being an enemy. Well, Mr. President, I have to tell you something very simple. About a month ago, there was a Russian attack submarine in the Gulf of Mexico that went undetected for two months, and now Vladimir Putin is talking about putting a naval base in Cuba. And guess what we're doing to our United States Navy thanks to this president? We're going to make the smallest United States Navy since 1915. And that's what he calls making sure that we have the greatest and most powerful military. This guy has not a clue about how to maintain peace through strength. President said very simply, if I cannot turn this economy around in four years, I'm a one-term proposition. <laughs> Mr. President, we're going to take you up on that one. 
He said if you pass my almost trillion dollar stimulus, that unemployment will stay below 8%. <laughs> Hello, McFly. <laughs> He said very simply that we're going to do the things to take care of health care and what do we see happening? We see our seniors being taken off of Medicare coverage because of the reimbursable rates being so low. When you talk about tax reform, tax reform to this president means that capital gains taxes go from 15% to 25%, but most importantly, the effect on our seniors, dividends taxes are about to go from 15% to 43.4%. That's not how we take care of our seniors down here in South Florida. And that's why you're going to send a message to this president, take your traveling road show somewhere else, but don't bring it back to Florida. <laughs> on inauguration day, gasoline prices on average in the United States of America were at buck 84. They are $3.83 on average across the country. Nine. <laughs> you know, I did go to the University of Tennessee. We struggled with that math thing. <laughs> but you have to understand that nothing that this president has done in three and a half years has been successful. Nothing. nothing. That was the nothing. weakest plea that I have ever heard to get another term. We have to be able to go out and explain these facts to the American people. Yes. That our economic security is heading in the wrong direction. Our energy security is in the wrong direction. He has refused the Keystone XL pipeline for his environmentalist friends. Our national security is going in the wrong direction. But yet we have a vice president that stood up there and told the American people that we have turned the corner. The only corner that we have turned is to go onto the road to perdition and we're going down that sucker like a bat out of hell. <laughs> This is our time. This is our time that the history books were right about. This is not just about changing out presidents. This is about who we are as a people. This is about the blessings of liberty, freedom, and democracy that 236 years ago, 56 great men signed their names to, the Declaration of Independence. It is about those fundamental principles and values that make us exceptional, unique, that make this the longest running constitutional republic that the world has ever known. That's what we must pass on to our children and grandchildren. I tell the story so often, and I'll close by telling you once again. Here's a young man born in the inner city of Atlanta, Georgia in 1961. The beaches that I represent now, my parents could not have walked on those beaches. I represent the highest per capita income zip code in the United States of America. Wow. That's what I call American exceptionalism. That's what I call a fair shot. That's what I call equality of opportunity that says no matter where you come from, no matter where you are born, whatever dream you have in this country, you can reach that dream. Amen. But if we're not careful, we will turn those dreams over to people that believe that they can dictate how far you can go and what you can achieve. And that is fundamentally against who we are. This is about whether or not we continue to be a republic governed by the Constitution and individual sovereignty. Or will we become a liberal, progressive, bureaucratic, welfare nanny state, which is exactly what the other side wants. Last week, think about these numbers. We are now $16 trillion in debt. We have 47 million Americans on food stamps. We have close to 9.5 million more Americans in three and a half years on the poverty rolls. That's not turning the corner. But yet, they want to bring out an old Soviet Union Marxist socialist theme for their campaign called Forward. I have to ask you one simple question. Where is the Soviet Union today? We are not going to go forward as they determined to go forward. We are going to go forward and recommit to the principles and values that made these great United States unlike any other nation that the world has ever known because of you and your spirit that cannot be defeated. We've got great candidates. We've got great people that want to step up and serve this great nation at the local level, at the state level, and at the federal level. Let's get them on the team. Let's get them elected so we can have a synergy of effort 
to ensure we have limited government, fiscal responsibility, individual sovereignty, the free market continues to grow. We honor our traditional values, which means that we will continue to talk about God because God blessed this great nation. And we will uphold the promises of national security. So God bless you all. We got 57.